Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It is right for us to review the commandments. What is the third commandment? Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we do not despise preaching and His word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. What is the sixth commandment? You shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we lead a sexually pure and peaceful life in what we say and do, and husband and wife love and honor each other. What is the ninth commandment? You shall not come to your neighbor's house. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we do not seem to get our neighbor's inheritance or house, or get in a way which only appears right, but help and be of service to him in keeping it. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. We may heal. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you with all our word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We may stand for the info. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shape on the right hand. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where, where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. You will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you going out and your coming in. From this time forth and forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. In peace, let us praise the Lord.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, have mercy on us, that with you, our, our ruler and guide, we may still have the things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in your Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today is from Isaiah 45, 1 through 7. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord who is anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and to loose the battles of the king, to open doors before him, the gates, gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted place. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the forts in secret places, that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name for the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen. I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Beside me, there is no God. I am with you, though, you do not know me. The people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and great planets. I am the Lord, does all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. His marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The epistle for today is from Thessalonians 1, 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in the word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example of all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia, 
For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report up concerning us, the kind of reception we have among you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, who he raised from the dead. Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
gospel for this day, which has been read to the community today. Perhaps they oppressed the people, but at least 
least they did not let others do so. St. Paul later wrote about this in Romans 13. Let everyone be subject to higher powers, for there is no higher power than God. The powers that be are the <coughs> of God. Whoever resists the power resists the ordinance of God. God has entrusted order in human society to various rulers, and we are to regard them as God's servants for our good. Now, to participate in human society, you have to accept the rules. There's a great benefit to children of playing games like Monopoly, for not only do they practice buying and selling, counting and calculating, reading and talk, communicating, but they also practice learning rules and applying them. Wait your turn. Take only $200 from cash and go. Roll the dice where everyone can see them. Read and follow the directions, unless everyone agrees that a new rule should be adopted. Participation in society involves what some thinkers have called a social contract. And the social contract is always informed and based on God's natural laws, his moral laws summarized in the Ten Commandments and written on human hearts. But our sinful condition, like a nearsighted eye, tends to get some things out of focus. Something's wrong. So perfect justice is never to be expected in any human society. And there is none that cannot, and maybe I should say there is none that ought not, be corrected, improved, rethought, reconsidered. Our own Constitution begins with these words, in order to form a more perfect union. Thus stating at the outset that the previous form of government, the Articles of Confederation, needed improvement. And while our Constitution was a great leap forward in government accountable to the people, there was a great moral flaw in its accommodation of slavery, which required the great purging of civil war to resolve that particular issue. And there has been regress as well as progress in our society and its government all through its history. But we have a moral obligation to support our government and institutions as God's instruments of temporal blessing. Furthermore, we have the great privilege denied to the Jews of Jesus' day of government accountable to the people. The Romans did not vote for Caesar. He obtained his office because he knew the right people and persuaded them to support his claim to office. And you know, a lot of those dynamics continue in our day. But at least you and I have a say, not only in selecting the president, but those officials who work with him in making laws, shaping policy, recognizing where power needs to be applied to just ends. We as citizens are like the servants entrusted with talents in Jesus' parable. They were given money to invest to the master's profit, but the one servant was afraid of failure and buried his talent. You and I have been entrusted with the high privilege of voting and communicating with our elected officials. We should not let this sacred responsibility pass unused it will require some work, talking to people in the know, research as to the issues and where candidates stand. It may mean disappointing friends or family who disapprove of your choices or decisions. But we have been given the gift of self-government, a say in who makes the policies and laws. God chooses to appoint our rulers through us. Let us use the gift to bless our country, our state, our city, yes, even our school board and sewer commission with worthy officials who will reward the right and prevent the wrong. God's kingdom of the right hand, as I have said,
said, is his people, the church. We obey not out of coercion, but out of faith, believing that God rules us by his presence in our lives through the Holy Spirit who speaks through the word. We look for salvation, not through government institutions, but through our Lord Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave his life, that we might enjoy peace with God and share that peace with others. His is a peace that transcends the here and now, a love that continues when situations change, a faith that has lasted 2,000 years in contrast to our government of a little over two centuries. And this kingdom of God will endure long after that of the left hand has lost its hold on it. When they asked Jesus about the tax, he asked to see the money. On the coin was an inscription of Caesar's. We live in Caesar's world. Our church as an institution must recognize God's authority behind laws we may disagree with. Much of the business of our congregation is really a matter of the kingdom of the left hand. Property management, income tax reporting, kitchen certifications, workers' contracts, including that of yours truly. Our November voters' meeting is when the congregation adopts a plan of serving God in this world and supporting that plan through a budget, a plan of costs and receivables. It allows us to establish a place in this temporal world where the people of God can hear the eternal word and celebrate the sacraments which connect us with the eternal Savior. This budget enables me, a man living in the world, the opportunity to give my time to working with God's people and to invite others to get on board the ark of God's church before it starts to rain. We live and work in both kingdoms of God, the right and the left, looking to the one for guidance to eternal peace with God and the other for a provisional security and a finite peace with our neighbor. The danger is that we, like some of Jesus' opponents, confuse the two kingdoms. We mistake Caesar for God and demand of Caesar that meaning of life and salvation of society that impatiently destroys the old so that the new may miraculously appear. Some like the Caesars of old and like the Hitlers, Bin Ladens, and Kim Jong-uns of the last century who demand divine honors, who demand the right to kill for the salvation of the state, who deny the claims of Christ on the life of believers. These must be resisted to the shedding of our blood. They may tax us. They may require of us humiliation. They may deny some of our rights. But we must obey God rather than man and trust that in that hour the Holy Spirit will enable us to speak. You recall the promise you made at your confirmation to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from this faith. God has promised us every good gift, temporal and spiritual, through Jesus Christ our Lord. He has instituted his kingdom of the left hand, the civil government, to give us a measure of temporal security and peace so that we may live in this world. We should cherish and use the gift so given. But he has given the kingdom of the right hand, his church, to guide us through this temporal life to an eternal life through his grace. He desires that grace to flow through us to others on our temporal journey, that others too may have the hope that extends beyond the grave May God bless your life under both kingdoms, that your faith may shine through your citizenship 
and your public spirit be a manifestation of God's love in you. May that peace of God that surpasses our understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Stand and confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. On page 158, for the inside cover of the hymn. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, of very God, very God, of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation, in and now from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us on the conscious side. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, to where the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the cross. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. We may sit to sing the offertory on page 159. The plates are brought forward. We prepare for the final prayers in the end. <laughs> Yet, 
Lord, make us one with your mission through our own prayers, offerings, and personal witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for our nation and our government, giving thanks for the institutions of government which holds elected officials responsible to the people. Make us good stewards of this gift, O oh Lord, and bless and guide our nation in the election before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. Let us pray for those who serve our nation in military service. Travis, Courtney, Justin, Joshua, Adam, Stephen, Patrick, Justin, Philip, Cody, Anthony, David, Mark, Ryan, Stephen, Patrick, and many others, those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Let's pray for those who serve on the front lines of the pandemic, our medical personnel, Sean, Kristen, Amanda, Jennifer, Alexis, Kara, Lindsay, Kelly, Sandra, Lynn, Rihanna, Courtney, and many others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Remember those in need of healing. Mark, Chris, Billy, Rosemary, Scott, Jim, Gloria, Bob, Harry, Gail, Dave, Nancy, Pastor Holes, John, Linda, Sierra, Gail, George, Martha, Roy, Ray, Candy, Janie, Sydney, Anita, Brian, Jerry, Dorothy, John, the Soupsy family, Joe, Sandy, Jeff, Linda, Lori, and others we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us remember our shut-ins, both those who are listed in our full Senate, especially the Antonio Valenti, the father of David Valenti, who has had to enter a nursing home. Also, Mark Slavsky, who has uh, entered into hospice status. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayers. prayers. We remember those that need special blessings, Chris, William, Denise, Brittany, Skylar, Melissa, Crystal, Sarah, Blake, and others we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayers. prayers. And we remember those who mourn, the family of Ellen Heidi, who passed away on October 12th, and the family of Jenny Dowdy, especially her husband Bob, who passed away on October 14th. That the Lord may comfort those who mourn with the knowledge that because Jesus lives, we have hope in the face of death. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. In your our prayers. prayers. In your hands, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for prayer. Let us pray. O God the Father, the foundation and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sit in our only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask that you do not forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be able to continue to serve. We through Jesus Christ, your